So the way it feels, you put the shirt on, is that level of confidence that comes out of you. Not only do you have a good feel, not only does it fit your arms, but the way it fits on your body, and in the modern style fashion, you walk around and you feel good. You feel like what? You feel like a legend. Conquer your life and go out there, my slogan is become one. I am connecting people. The brand is connecting people indirectly without me even being there. Through a brand, in a completely through different a place. commitment, through a community to bring these people together in a different city. Can you believe it? State. When I hear these stories, thousands of goosebumps. miles away, full on goosebumps. Bro, I, I see them. Hey, y'all. Thanks for tuning in to the 11th episode of the Mr. Atlanta podcast. My guest today is Anuj Thakar, founder of Legend Apparel Company, co-owner of Supersign Express Car Wash, and an overall hardworking hustler, is referred to as the nucleus of our friends group. Y'all sit back, relax, and enjoy maybe the most fun to film podcast so far. All right, say this. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. <laughs> red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Leather. You are often an MC um, at events. Yeah, I've done it before a couple times. Mainly for You're a great MC too, yeah. Well, it's mainly from families, fam- family events, but... I've done a couple, or mainly just one, with uh, Lure for a Cure, and uh, it's an exhilarating experience. Yeah. Truly, truly. It's, like a, it's almost like an adrenaline rush. Okay. Yeah, you feel it right here, because you're staring at all these people, and I mean, regardless of who you are, public speaking is, is not an easy thing for anybody, because, because you've got to be, it's, it comes with a confidence thing, right? It's more of like you've got to be so happy with who you are as a person, regardless of the looks, regardless of what you're saying. You feel like you've got to be knowledgeable in whatever the, whatever you're talking about. Mm-hmm. So you've got to be able to relate to everybody and bring them in. So your voice has to bring them in. Happy enough with yourself, with this voice. Whatever is coming out of your mouth. So you can't be scared about what you're going to say. So the best way to do it, I say, if you ever had worries about public speaking with anybody or speaking in general to anything it's all about treating it like you're speaking to one person but so i'll i'll look into the crowd right i'm sure so i will i like that intro yeah i'm gonna give us an intro of my from myself Mm -hmm. to start it but let's go ahead and get it a little rundown of who you are okay and what you do and what you like to do yeah well i'm uh well my name is anuj anuj the car i uh i live here in buckhead georgia and um Basically, what I do as a person is a couple of things. Um, well, I started a uh, pretty much a high-end luxury clothing brand, is what I like to call it. It's a brand that's really made for the urban industry and the city wear, uh, but it gives a more luxury feel to who you, uh, people that dress uh, in casual clothing, but more of a luxury fabric, mm. right? So. Whereas somebody will feel like they are still dressed up for an event or doing something or whether you're brunch, whether it be going out, whether it be going to the gym, whether it be just lounging around. It's an adaptable kind of clothing that people like to wear. They look good. They feel good, but they don't feel like they have to be dressed up for anything. Right? That's Legend Apparel. And then also I run a chain of car washes. This started with, um, with Peter, which is my pops, and he... My father, he started a chain of convenience stores and then he opened up a car wash and a car wash business started to strive pretty well and um, decided to leave the software companies I used to work for that I did sales for uh, to help him expand because who better to join the family business than somebody in the family, right? So that's, uh, that's kind of the turn that I've made and for the past year, that's what I've been doing is working with him is expanding. Uh, we just opened up a new one in uh, the Chateau Milan, Brazilton area and it comes with the oil lube shop, detail shop, and this is like the flagship store that has started everything from a learning curve on understanding everything. But my overall goal, fully, this is what I do, right? My fully goal, full goal behind everything, because Legend Apparel is a passion. This I like to ask people company. personal, professional, and fitness goals. Personal, professional, and fitness goals, okay. Well, personal goals, it ties into professional. Right, because personal goals in life is, I want to become a full-on developer, right? So developer is anything from property development, commercially. 
So anybody that builds anything from shopping centers to hotels to car washes, anything in regards to bringing in and being the person at the center point of every little thing that needs to be done to develop a specific building, whatever it might be. Money, investors, it just takes knowledge in that industry. And I'm learning everything, uh, what I'm doing by developing new car washes. Mm. So, um, awesome, dude. Yeah, that's, that's a cool. great, yeah. incredible way to get it I mean, that's, going. Yeah. You're an only, you have a one younger brother. Yeah. yeah, he goes to the University of Miami. He's gonna be a, planning to become a doctor. He just took the MCAT like a month ago. And uh, kid's a smart guy. He's gonna do well. Um, you know, he's, he's the kind of kid that when he puts it all in, he goes for it. But it doesn't take away from anything else, right? Very social, you know, he, he's street smart, socially smart, he can talk to people, he's a finesse, all those regards. And then he's got the book smart and like the, the, the focus on education on what he wants to do. So he goes all in. My, my name actually means little brother. Really? Which is which is crazy because it's ass backwards, right? Right. In in that in this regard to um, me having a little brother being older. What's his name? Carter. He goes by KT. KT. Carter cool Cigar. guy. Yeah. A good guy. KT, cool guy. That's it. That's right. He's the he's the man. I I definitely look up to him, in certain regards. And he cool. looks up to me in certain regards, right? And I always have to pull the good things out of people, no matter the age or who they are. Who they are. You know what I mean? So what's your relationship like with your family? Fantastic, obviously. I work with Pops. I work with my mom. My mom's like the accountant. She runs all the finance, everything like that. She basically controls the money. The accountability. Yeah, she <laughs> is, is she's so actually commonly... the owner of everything. Really? Um, it's in mom's name? No, I mean, it was a partnership. But what I mean by that is she she holds all the money. So who, so who really wins? You know what I mean? So um, so I'm, I'm, I'm with him every day. I mean, I'm not always with them. They're, they don't always show up to different locations. I'm just running around, but family business, you're always together. And that is an amazing experience. It's not easy to do. Working with dad, you know, especially being, you know, I guess what they call it, a millennial versus somebody that grew up, you know, in a different country and came to this country and built something from nothing. Their work ethic is a completely separate way of doing things that you can do. Smart work versus hard work. Mm. And I'm quicker. So... I can't move, he can't move as fast as I can, so everything has to be slowed down until I'm fully in there, right? But uh, I'm teaching him so much, he's teaching me so much. So it's like a mutual way of, we, be, we, we essentially become like really good friends mm -hmm. and business partners. And because sometimes I'll even forget he's my dad. Right. And that right there is everything. That's, right? A, that's the whole, that's the whole idea behind running the family business is that is that that relationship that you build, that's the hardest part, is you've got to put aside that he's my dad and I'm his son. It's more of like a business decision in certain regards, and it's a learning curve for both parties. Right. And it comes from tech savvy to somebody that's been doing something, you know, old school. Right? And the, the hard way, the stead right way, his old school way, has been affected. Yeah, I mean, it has. But he sent you out into the wild and now has you back. See, the thing is, he, he didn't pull me back. I chose to go back. I right? remember we were talking a little bit. I remember riding in your car in front of Lennox Mall when you were like, this, my boss is telling me to do this. Remember that? Yeah. He was saying this. And like, the philosophical differences, a few things that he said, the timing. I remember you're just like, and I have this other opportunity with my family, so... It's, it's, it's almost... It was almost inevitable, really. Because if you really think about it, I could chuck, climb the ladder of the corporate. I could be a salesman all my life and just sell bigger products and sell more expensive products and keep making dimes on the dollar for a big corporation and continue to keep working for somebody that continues to tell me what to do on a daily basis, right? So that being the case... Most people have to, right? And I'm not saying, I, I'm saying that you, you take advantage of resources and opportunities that have been given to you, full on. And if you don't, you're too prideful, mm. right? That's what kills people, is pride. Pride or lack of pride. Okay, either way, my point being is, uh, is that 
is that if I, I could do my way and it could take me twice or three times as long to get to that level of, I guess you can say income or lifestyle that you're looking for, when I could shorten that time frame and learn something brand new and do it on my own mm -hmm. with, with what he's built. Expansion. Expansion is everything. If someone took all their life from when they were young, they built this knowledge and guts and confidence and then they come to a different place and then they start fresh again and build whatever they built. It's inspiring. And to think that it wasn't a selfish act. He didn't do it for him only. We well, did it for everybody. He did it for his family. He did it for his kids. That's what people sometimes forget. Right? Now, the difference is you can go professional. Right, you can become a professional and you don't have to actually jump into it. But I've always been the kind of person that's been interested in business in general. I went to school for business, went to school for communications, became a salesman. That's what I love to do is sell sales, marketing, all those things, accounting. Those Where'd are... you go to school? Let's back up a little bit. Yeah, no Talk problem. about oh, yeah, yeah. I went to elementary uh, through Well, I grew up in Decula. So through I'm college and there. what kind of hobbies and sports yeah. and clubs were you interested in in elementary school through the way what kind of and then what shaped you from it sure sure school. well I was born in Connecticut raised in Jersey for like until I was about six or seven years old um, I went out to India for like two years when I was first born just for my parents to start making money then I went to Georgia and then I went to Decula it was in uh, Gwinnett County grew up there all the way through high school from elementary, middle, high school. Then I went to uh, college at Valdosta State University um, and got a business degree there. I got a communications degree there, marketing, management. And um, that was fun over there. You know, I didn't want to stay for that long, but I kind of got stuck, stuck, you know, because yeah, I, it's hot in Valdosta. It was just a good place to be. I was uh, farther away from home. I didn't really want to tie into where everybody was. I wanted to completely branch out and step out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So that was the place to go to. I mean, there was other Literally places. the exact same way I feel about Georgia State, bro. Exactly. So that being the case, mm -hmm. uh, college was great. It was awesome, had a blast. And then I moved back here to Atlanta. I've done a lot since then. Yeah, it's been fun. how we meet? how did we meet you meet? <sighs> J.D. Farrell? Definitely. It was like, uh, I was hanging, I, I, I just, oh, that's right. We met on your party bus. It was J.D. Farrell's uh, uh, birthday party. 2017? 2017? 2017? 2017. So it's no, 25th birthday, something like that? Something like that. I don't know how old he is. Maybe 28. But um, you have, that kind of set it off. I think it was like 20... Atlanta. Sixteen or I moved to Atlanta three months prior, okay. two or three months prior to, to that, that bus party. So then, I, because I was working at a company called Lead Forensics, and it was a software sales company that we sell software. I've heard of JD it. was like the top dog. To be the top dog, get to know the top dog, understand the top dog. At that point, and I uh, couldn't find out. He, you know, he just invited me to his birthday party, and I, uh, I went to his birthday party. It was on that bus, and I was like. This guy was this buzz. He's running this bus. This is kind of cool. And you were sitting up on like the, the bar area. And I was like, "What's your name?" You know, and I got to know you there, and you were doing so much. You inspired me. I was like, "My God, this is because so this is new to me, right?" It was so new to me. All these people in Atlanta grinding, doing different things, growing things, and like, it was all new, right? So to me, it's like everything has been in my head, right? I've never executed anything. So coming to Atlanta and watching people execute so many different things all over the place, just making money, doing their thing, loving what they do, it's all those things, and it was like, God, the sky's the limit. Right? I could do anything in the city. I mean, it's the city. People come to the city to get rich. They come to the city to build, to learn, to network, and to understand and build a group of people that they can be a part of that can take you to the next level. Or they can just get stuck working for a 9-to-5 job and do nothing. It's it's a it's a de depends on who you are, right? So yeah, I met you on that, and then ever since then, you know, we've become pretty close friends, and we've done a lot together, and 
in Vegas together. Talk about, I mean, we become pretty close. And you like to keep people that are, that are ambitious close. Because if you're like that, then why not? Right? You want to keep people like you around. Same goals. That's what I would say. People, two people yeah. like that have the same goals. Cheers, same goals. Goals, tears. Yeah. Um, my most recent podcast before the one right earlier today with Thomas. Good guy. Good guy. With Chase and Ox, you were referred to as the nucleus. The um, nucleus. The nucleus. Which of all the things to which you were referred, you were talked about a, a decent amount and some pretty great admiration and love and credit to, what, is everything to what you do. But it takes a leader, bro, at the end of the day. It takes a leader, somebody who's stepping out of their comfort zone, saying things that aren't being said, and engaging people to want to do, to be, to live. Yeah. To have purpose. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And I mean, that's what they, that's what I felt. So they say, they say one thing strong. They say, if the only way you grow is when you step outside of that comfort zone. So I started becoming addicted to that. I started wanting to put myself in positions that I wasn't comfortable in. And you learn to adapt. And that is the key to life, is adaptability. The better you can adapt to any situation, any place, any person, anywhere you are, you'll continue to keep growing. And that comes with a level of confidence in yourself. That's, that's the key to life, not success. It might be key to success, but not just those certain specific regards that people come up with. It's life in general. To experience the full exposure of what this is, is adaptability. Like a I chameleon, would, bro. That's it. That's it. You become whatever the surrounding circumstances are. You become whatever it is that you need to become to make yourself feel at home. And it, it changes everything, right? It changes everything. It's a vibe. You create that vibe with whoever you're around. At least that's what I believe. I don't know. I mean, not everybody fix like that but if they do maybe they... it is only about vibrations that's it that's it and in my new health journey you you and i met when i had a whole different set of priorities sure things that i was doing i was living for for everything i was good and active and productive. Yeah. And some great compliments I've you told me from then. But the level I'm at now compared to then is an entirely different. And it all starts with the internal vibrations. And that starts with what you eat. 100%. And I've never in my life eaten properly. So I go back to this a lot because this is the number one thing that that builds us to who we are as you are, what you eat, and eat on this 40% fruit, 30% vegetable, 25% nut, 15% grain diet has taken me to a mental, physical, and overall spiritual level I've never been That's with, fantastic. with more mental clarity and physical energy than I've ever had. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. But once you experience it a little bit, you don't ever really want to go back. And I'll sure. be honest, I cheated yesterday. I You're bought a human. pizza from Walmart. You're human. And, <laughs> and some cheese. And I ate it. And it made me feel kind of shitty. That's the point. But the fact is that you're, you, you've gotten to a certain point that you eat this kind of food and it makes you feel this way, but it tastes good. It's like, a, it's like alcohol, right? It's just like that. You know what's going to happen the next day. But you do it for that small amount of pleasure that you're going to get from mm. it. Same thing with pizza and all this nonsense. That you but I also bought hummus, guacamole, black beans. Substitute. And peppers. And so I had to put all that aside and go back to the, to the hummus, bro. And, and I feel like with, I, we haven't talked about this, but with your Indian heritage, oh, yeah. do your family members and your parents eat a plant-based diet? <laughs> uh... Kind of. It's different, right? 
in the Indian culture, it's uh, especially in the state of where my parents grew up was the state of Gujarat, and um, they're primarily vegetarian, right? So my mother is fully vegetarian. I mean, damn near vegan. So no eggs, right? Drinks milk, but no eggs, right? So no meat, no nothing. So it's all spices, right? It's all potatoes, vegetables, whatever mixed together in gravy. It's also spices combined together with like almost like a broth or, excuse me, like soup. Mm. A great way to preserve nutrients in food. Yeah, I mean, Because I say yeah. vehemently now, as soon as you make your food hot or cold, you lose nutrients. So, so it's like fresh, you mean? Like fresh, whatever is raw, whole food, plant-based is the best way to live. And that's where I'm at. I went from zero to 100, bro. I'm from eating processed meat, processed food, and like a pretty meat-based diet to this. And I know a lot of people do different derivatives is what I do. Once you go raw, uncooked, it's definitely the Mecca, and that's how I was able to cheat getting back from a 36 waist to a 29 wow. at 30 years old. That's, that's not easy. That's, that's not easy. Yeah, that's like, I wanted to die are, last year. Uh, you are pushing yourself. Pushing. But that's awesome, because I saw you at a high point. Then I saw you fall. Then I saw you at the lowest point. And then I, then, 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 then you wait, right? Then you pull back and you just watch. And if you don't come out, then you're stuck. And then you kind of lose people, right? You're at the low point. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying I wasn't there at a low point, but it's more of like a personal low point. Like it's like attitude, thought process, treating people, your look, your way you do things. And, and no, one, no one ever is gonna put you down there, but you put yourself in a position how to come out of it. This is it right here. And it's inspiring. It's really cool. It's really cool because at one point I was uh, a little upset, um, but you were at like a point in your life where it was like, it was, it was different. It wasn't you. It wasn't the first time. It wasn't the first person I met. Right. I, 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 I became friends with the beginning, David Brown, all the way and then it fell, and it was like, he's not the same person anymore. Let's, let's see when he comes back to that level of where he was. And that's just how it is, and you have, completely. And it's amazing, it's super cool. It's super cool, because that takes patience. That takes a lot of work ethic in yourself. Um, mental stability, emotional stability. Right. To kind of do it by yourself, because I alienated by yourself, yeah. a lot of people um, with my actions around my birthday last year. It happens, and I understand that is how it goes. That's the reaction to my actions. It was not even that. It was your. It was. A, it was a reaction to. It, it led up to that point. It was like a carelessness, and then it was the reaction after that, and it was like, all right, well, let's just wait. This is, for this is me. I was like, well, I mean, because we, we're close, right? We talk all the time, and then we stop talking. But then I let you grow out of it to come back to who you actually are as a person, the ambition. Thanks for letting me grow, bro. It's true. You, you, know? you let me go be do, which is how it needs to be for a lot of people. They need to get out by themselves. Go find yourself again. And do it. And if they do or don't, that's you don't know, if you want to fuck with them. And a lot of people that go through those kind of periods, and at least the two other times I've done it in my life, I wasn't eating right, That's which true. enabled me to not work out. It's a mental thing. So, you know, I, there's a few things that you've said to me over time that have stuck with me, and one of them was, did you make money today? <laughs> it's true. You asked me that on the phone when I was in my slump, like a year and a half ago, and I wasn't working at the time, and I was like, I didn't really answer. <laughs> but the next day I went and made some money that's it and I went and got back and it's a feeling and it's a feeling when you, when you make money every day no matter what you do if you make money that day something $20 it doesn't fucking matter what it is you made money that day it's a feeling 
Absolutely. If you go an entire day without making zero dollars, like you like like for example, like a Saturday or even a Sunday. If you went that entire day, I'm talking a seven day week. If you went that entire day, you didn't make a dime. You won't feel right. At least I don't feel right. There's something that especially happens. if you're helping people when you do. Sure, that. regardless of what you do, it could be anything. Well, hopefully what you do to earn money helps people, which has pretty much been every facet of my source of income has been a way to make it easier for other people, of course. Um, Middleman is what you could call me in a lot of different ways. And that's cool because I'm in the middle of situations of people who need something and want something. Supply and demand, how do you maximize that? And one of my next big goals is to get another unit in this apartment complex. Really cool. Start Airbnb. Back at it. Stay ATL. Stay. That's a. And it's about to be. So so this is what so in my eyes when you sent me the questionnaire, uh, I read it, and I was like, okay, this is what he's looking for. I'm not gonna like write the answers. I'm just like, okay, this is what he's looking for. This is the gist. If I'm like, if we're like super scripted, it's not fun. Mm -mm. Right, if you're like, all right, so what are yeah. we doing? It's not fun. It's not That's fun. why it was fun so, to start like we did. Yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't yeah. even know you started. And I figured you started like half It was in. already live. Yeah. That's, what I, that, <laughs> that's the right way to do it. Because then you get them talking. You don't even think about like, no, there's no, no, there's no thinking. Because you take that, like, because people change, right? Like, okay, I'm on camera. Like, all right, let me just. Uh, right. It's, it wasn't like that. When you started this, this is a genius way of starting a podcast. Thank Seriously, you. Seriously, you just go at it, just start asking questions, start talking. Because it, it, it's like you're talking, right? And I've been on podcasts before, and they're very scripted. All right, so what is your favorite place to eat? Like, no, 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 no. Right, like the, like the questions and script I sent you. So I have a way more dumbed down version yeah. that I will send in the future. That's but that's what it's all about is, sure, I that's really, good. That's yeah. kind of the information I want my viewers and, yeah. and listeners to, to hear. Mm -hmm. But if there's no rapport, yeah. then fuck it. 100%. So my point being, the reason why I brought that up is because when I read that, I was like, okay, this is a really good way of presenting Stay ATL. Because, because if, if, if you were, if, let's say Stay ATL started again and you started doing Airbnbs again and you started investing and by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in starting that with you again because now that I have a little bit of capital, I can do that with you so we can talk that later. But I saw that and I was like, man, could you imagine if you pushed a, like, like a Facebook ad or Instagram ad or a Google ad or anything like that as a video source, like a visual, um, of somebody talking about Atlanta, right? And when they talk about Atlanta, you pull snippets out of certain things. And this is how you present stay, t stay ATL, right? The full experience of ATL. Like what is, and, and hear it from the locals. Okay. Let's expand on this. So this is, this is stuff that already exists, covers footage, places, recommend, recommendations that yeah. you and I know. Yeah. That we know. Yeah. And just saying, you know, somebody with the camera, with me, this is the Ivy, the place at the bar you want to order your drink, or this is Centennial Olympic Park, where you can get some of the best pictures, Jackson Street Bridge, putting off some of the best places in a just quick, and I'm finally with this MacBook Pro that has editing capabilities for video. Yeah. That's been one of the reasons I haven't taken on as many photography and videography programs in the past five years, is because I've, I've had a dope ass camera but not a fast enough computer. Well, that's what matters. You can have the best camera in the world, but if you don't have the editing software or a good computer to do it on, there's, there's nothing. Exactly. Kind of shit. So I've been recording in lower depths. Yeah. I haven't been doing my full potential. Now I'm there, so I'm doing this podcast because at the end of the day, this is going to be one of the most important, referenceable places when you're quoting authorities and saying, hey, Alexa, hey, Siri. <laughs> They're both responding. Where's the restaurant? Respond to. Or brand a Nuge and David referenced on the 26th day. That's of pretty September. interesting. Though. How can you get a software to do something? Like it that? will do it soon, if it not now. Like I'm sure it already has the capability to do such a thing. And if you say, "Hey Siri, play the Mr. Atlanta podcast," it will do it's that. It's not even that. Like and jump to 46 minutes in when David and Nuge are talking about me. 
So that's a big, honest intention behind what I'm doing is making that's a good way. indexable, like searchable like internets about the things that really matter. Just by voice? Just, Just by hearing? Going back, we have the video, but going back to voice, which is the future. Like Pass passive audio is the future. My God. So you're basically saying, hey, Google, um, reference uh, what me and David spoke about uh, give or take 30 minutes into the YouTube video episode four, A News to the Car. Like, that intricate, I mean, think about that. It can pretty it can, much do that now. It's unbelievable. But regardless, to even waiting for that future kind of thing, uh, people could reference this. Right. Like, okay, so let's, back to what I was saying about Stay ATL. Like, about what Atlanta has to offer. Like what Atlanta brings to the table. What, what Atlanta, does it offer? Well, no, I'm mean, saying like if anybody comes from any other city, right? I mean, this is a city, right? And it's starting to become one of like the main cities that people think about, right? You think New York, you think Miami, you think LA, you think Austin, Texas, you think Chicago. These are the cities that people think about when they think, all right, well, name a city, right? San Fran and then Atlanta. Atlanta. Atlanta is one of those cities that everybody in the entire United States of America talks about because it's part of one of those big cities, right? Or probably their life. Exactly. <laughs> so anybody coming to visit Atlanta, they always want to, like, why? Why Atlanta? Like, why am I going to go to Atlanta? Like, why should I go visit Atlanta? Because I love to go visit New York because I know exactly what I'm supposed to Big buildings is the expectations, right? The buildings, the, the, the people, the taxis. Like, it's just like a cool... Different vibe, right? You know exactly what to um, look for when you go to LA, right? You got the beaches, you got the mountains, you got the valley, you got the girls, you got the lifestyle, you the sign. You know what I mean? Those kind of things. San Francisco, you know what to what to what to look for. The hills, the trees, the big trees, the mountains are the fog and the bridge, those kind of things. But what is it that Atlanta has to offer? You know what I mean? I mean obviously we got the Coca-Cola factory, you know, we've got the aquarium. Those aren't the fun things that people want to do when they come here. Maybe for an hour or two, they want to go check out like the tourist attractions. But everyone wants to step off that big ass bus that tells you about the city. They want to go do the things that they're pointing at, right? You know what I mean? So, so Atlanta, Atlanta is is uh, I like to say Atlanta is culture and Atlanta is art. That's what I see, right? You. You experience so it's not like all in one area. There's so many different aspects of Atlanta, from from a from a Buckhead perspective, from a Midtown perspective, from a Virginia Highlands perspective, from a Edgewood perspective, from downtown perspective. There's like it's all a different vibe in each individual area. What is it that you enjoy to do, right? That's the question. What is it that you enjoy to do? Is the, really the question, right? You want to drink, you want to dance, you want to talk. There's clubs in this you corner. You want to sit, you want to chill, you want to smoke. What do you want to do? You want to smoke cigs. But really, you wanna... it's the people. What kind of people do you want to surround yourself mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. right? Are you an older person that's coming to Atlanta but like to go out, places like Johnny's Hadaway, and then there's also like, if you're, if you're a wealthier person, like you've got, you're coming to Atlanta to spend some money, where are you supposed to go, right? You go to the shops of Buckhead, you know, places like the Biltong Bar, places like this, um, you know, just like Gypsy Kitchen and like all those kind of places, right? Then you've got like young professionals that are like 25, 26, 27 years old. They're coming to the city with love to drink, but they want to be around just a bunch of beautiful women. But they're like a little bit more of like a, um, they're, they're not like underground. They're, they're not really like grungy, but they want to be upscale kind of thing, but they don't want to be too upscale. Then you've got Buckhead. Right, Buckhead Five, the Big Sky, the Ivy, those places. These are the places that people like to go. So um, there's so much, there's so much diversity in, in Buckhead. Atlanta. In Buckhead, yeah, in Atlanta. And then you've got Midtown, right? And then you've got like the the veranda, the uh, Cuckoo Room, those places over there, right? It's all. I highly different. recommend Cuckoo Room. Definitely, definitely. The great place, great place to go. I also like Colony Square, the establishment. Um, and then I'll go down to the Vortex, the Laughing Skull. It's fun. There's so much to do. But the thing is, these people that come to Atlanta, they don't know about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. but they won't. They can't. Unless they have a local to tell them that, okay, this is where this is. So if you like to do this, this is where you go. You go to Midtown, you go to Establishment, you go to Laughing Skull, you go to Vortex, you go to all these 
like the little five points, you could kind of understand what the culture and the art is. Mm -hmm. You go to the Virginia Highlands, if you want to see some crazy karaoke under, uh, in a basement, you know, a dark horse that you can go downstairs and there's a full live band, you can do karaoke in front of the entire crowd of people, like you feel like you're an actual rock star. You do, it's true. It's cool, it's really cool. Uh, and then you got Buckhead that you're just full of just money. It's like, it's like the my it's like the, it's like the money part of Atlanta. That's what a lot of people like to be. It's like, they want to feel that, that feeling of like wealth around them, regardless of if they have it or not. You know, like my favorite Mexican restaurant in the entire city. I guess that's a big truth of why so many people flock to Buckhead. It's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a, I wouldn't say like an acceptance thing. It's more of like, um, it's like a feeling, right? Mm. Like, for example, my favorite Mexican restaurant in the city of Atlanta, regardless of anywhere, is Red Pepper in Buckhead. It's the ambiance, it's the people, it's the location, it's the type of people that come there. And you, you're basically in the center of Buckhead. And then the food and the drinks. Oh, the food, the drinks are... Fantastic. But yeah, no, exactly. It's the community and culture It's and amazing. Love. It's amazing. It's, it's Way before. so cool because you'll see everything from, you know, big high exotic whips and all everybody the, the the beautiful women i mean there's always so many gorgeous women there and it's just like a feeling that you feel like and then the, and you're surrounded by many big buildings too so you just feel like i'm the city you know what i mean i'm in i'm in like i'm in the city and this is where i i came to eat and i just feel like everything's close by and everything like that so that is the perfect place to go eat um if you visit atlanta uh, and if you're about to go out and you need like a pre-game dinner or you want to just enjoy the city you know, I've got Havana nightclub across the street where Tug and Groove down the street from there Buckhead bars down the street from there right where do you get hooked up the most I hooked up in Buckhead other than like uh, like my way in kind of thing like, um, like with the bouncers and like the VIP tables and all that stuff well I mean obviously I, mean, I get hooked up I do a lot of events at um, Havana Nightclub. I'm sure you already know that. Um, and uh, I'm very close with the VIP manager there. I'm very close with the owner there, the whole security there. So I run a clothing Gina brand. Gina and Andy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, um, so I run a clothing brand called Legend Apparel. Obviously, you know about Let's that. Let's dive into that. Back to, back to that. Tell so, me like I have no idea and I'm a... You want to know more about Legend Apparel? So, okay, so, so Legend Apparel, again, so I'm in three different stores. we got an exclusive game, which is right there next to Red Pepper, which is the perfect place. Um, it's like a really high-end boutique. I'm at the House of Fresh with Drummer Boy. I'm at the Shops of Buckhead, Adam. I'm at Threads ATO in Virginia Island. So I've got my shirts in every single place in Atlanta, just about. Um, and I'm obviously online. But Drummer uh, Boy is one of my favorite people. Drummer Boy wears my hat every day. Like all the time, like his Instagram. I'm sure you saw his Instagram. I'm on it. Legend. You've probably seen it. It's pretty cool when he, he does that kind of stuff. But that's 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 what Atlanta's about. It's, it's listen to this track, bitch. Is that Drum Boy? Love the way that it is. That is Drum Boy. That's one of six or so that he has. He's he helped design my more. Stay ATL merch. So wow. this will Stay ATL. I'm sure you've probably seen this or that. Yeah, the whole world has seen, or the whole Atlanta's seen. Uh, the lighters or the... The lighters, that's hilarious. I know, yeah. I, I wish um, I got more of the lighters and a few other things. But yeah, it's definitely about the merch game getting a brand that has a philosophy and a message behind it that does something and then obviously it looks good, feels good. Mm. And then pushing it out and keeping it going and keeping it maintained, I think, would be the hardest part. one of the biggest parts of advice I give myself mm -hmm. looking back is invest more back into it. I know investing in people is really important, which is kind of one, one of the things that spread me. But find a way to put it right back into itself for more of the highest selling whatever yeah that's absolutely right that's exactly that's exactly the ideology behind it i mean my so the goal of legend of Pro, right so the goal all overall was just 
So I build a lot of resources in the city, right? And you shake a lot of people's hands, right? So when you go out there and you're shaking these people's hands, you're meeting these people, you're you know, growing your network in itself, what's the point? What's the point of going out there and talking to all these people, doing all these things, if you're not going to utilize that? Someone knows someone that knows someone that can influence your brain. Someone knows someone that could potentially help you in every regard. So be the kind of person that creates something that could be, that every single person that you handshake could be a dollar sign. And I know that's, it sounds like greedy but or, 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 or whatever you want to call it, but... Also sounds like the American way. So that's the thing. People don't think like that. People are like, oh, well, I know, I know all these people, but what, what's the point? What's the point of knowing all these people if you're not going to utilize those resources that you keep building? You're just going out and doing nothing. You're just getting drunk. You're right. And then you're going home, going to sleep, and then you wake up the next morning and do the same thing again. Whatever. What connection are you creating? What because kind of rapport? It, because then you... Then, then, what kind of community value and love... Correct. Subconsciously, you're lost. ...is going to come out of this. Yes. Right. Do you want to or not? You're lost. Are your intentions when you go out to create something bigger and better than yourself... Than just your wheezy peasly little fucking self, or is it to help the greater good? So I said this to you earlier. Remember, don't be afraid to say yes. Mm. The more times you say no to something, in most regards, you are closing a door that you don't know what's on the other side. You know, you have no idea. So if I'm walking through a hallway and there's just doors, right? They're just opening up. They open up, and I say no to that, or I'm like, I can't, or I put it off, or I don't go do it, and I close that door, and automatically that door is going to close itself anyways, I have no idea what's on the other side of that door. And in most cases, the people that are lost, they're just going through life, and people are coming and going, people are coming and going, but they're always wishing for something, but they're just coming and going and coming. But the people that are not lost are the people that are walking through life, and they know exactly what they want and they've got goals and they've got something in the long run that every single person that shows up in their life, every single opportunity that shows up in their life, everything that's been given to them right there on the table, they've, they're, they're fully understanding that this person's here. I'm reasoning that I, I put myself in this position. is because I'm supposed to be next to this person. I'm supposed to say hello to this person or this person saying hello to me. I'm supposed to meet this person. Mm -hmm. And you're always trying to figure out why. Who are you? Why are we having this conversation? Why are we connecting and, and really vibing so significantly that there's something that I'm supposed to be doing for you? Or there's something that you're supposed to be doing for me? That's the question that you always have to ask. It's beautiful. Is, it, is, it that I'm, is, is it me or is it you? Or is it mutual? That's the question. And, and if you don't ask it, you'll never know. And there's another And I love that about close. you. You consistently... You gotta figure it out. Ask that question. You mentally do it. It's usually pretty apparent yeah. because very shortly thereafter, you're verbally putting it into the universe That's and it. helping establish these manifestations. That's it. That's it right there. Manifestations. That's what you're manifesting. You're manifesting your entire life. People that are lost, they're doing it, and they don't even know they're doing it. People that aren't lost. They know doing they're doing it with those love and intentional. A, they're saying yes value to certain things. Like, mm -hmm. Am I supposed to be here? Maybe. Was I supposed to meet that guy that was standing here, Thomas? Maybe. But how do I know what comes next? Because if I would have put this off, if I would have just said no or did something else, regardless, you don't really know what's next and where it's going to take you. Mm -hmm. You don't know. So why not go explore it? And if it doesn't end up being something that you're looking for, you might have done something for somebody else. That's a self -assessment. That changed or saved. You might have said something to that person that clicked in their mind. You might have shown something about you that changed something in somebody's mind. You might have done something to inspire someone indirectly. And at the end of it all, you feel like nothing has come to you, but really it's something that you've given to someone else. And that's a selfless act. And the more you do that, and the more you realize that, what happens is more things come to you. So how do you do that? Or you don't know. Part of your routine. Well, it's not really a routine. It's more of just a life. Lifestyle. It's just full lifestyle. It's like every day you wake up and it's a completely new day. 
you treat a new day as a full day. Like it's not anything the same as it was going to be the day before. You're going to meet new people. You're going to talk about new things. There are going to be new ideas, new epiphanies, new everything. It's a completely new day mm. to change everything. People's days nowadays, people's life nowadays can change. People say, oh, well, you can't do this overnight. No, people's lives change overnight sometimes because of one thing that they thought about because somebody says something that triggers something. But if, if, if you don't notice those things, you're creating it. You, you did that. You created it in your mind. You said it. You said that you wanted this. You wanted to do this. You wanted to go here. You wanted, you wanted it. You wanted something. No matter what you think, your subconscious is saying it, and the whole world is changing for you. It's changing for everybody else too, but it's also changing for you. And it's, it's like a weird waves that just start attracting like a magnet. It's pulling people and things and ideas and certain things that people say into you to take you on the path on where you want to go subconsciously guaranteed. That's a fact. So, if you don't know that, you're lost. If you, if you follow it instinctively, it'll take you to where you want to go. Now, it's the hardest fucking thing to do because there's what? Doubt. There's negativity. There's like, there's so many, like, just, 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 just feelings. That's all it is, just feelings that bring you back alcohol, depressants like that, certain things that, that, that push you back 10 steps, that you have to start climbing again, right? Think about if you're walking up a hill and you try to make it to the top of that fucking hill. It's all the way fucking up there and you keep walking up this fucking hill. You just keep walking and walking and walking. And then someone pushes you or something pushes you and you fall back down here. You guys start fucking walking again. It's fucking terrible. It is. And you guys are you're just walking again. And people that are lost, they're just walking up. They're not even walking up a hill, they're just walking. But, what about but they don't even don't know that they're on a hill. That's what, what? If you don't want to walk, you're dead. If, if, if you don't want to walk, you're dead. You die. You're dead. You're dead. People, people that give up, they die. People that give up mentally, they get in a car accident, they, something happens, they get cancer, they die. You know, it's crazy. I don't like to talk about it because it's not the right way or I might be just fucking psycho in that regard but maybe maybe not but but that uh you know people die all the time right just like that right they get a car accident they die they but for some reason they get cancer and then they die or they they get sick and they die or they get stabbed or shot or something happens they get, something happens something bad bad happens and they It's crazy to think, but I think that no matter what, they kill themselves. They, 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 something subconsciously they thought about to put themselves in that position. I don't care what anybody says. That's just a weird way of thinking, but subconsciously they did that. I'd have to be lying if I said I didn't agree. I know. You can't agree with that. You, you can't. No, 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 I do agree. Oh, you do agree? Oh, you're, I'd be lying if I disagreed. I say you, you disagreed. Okay, I see what you meant. I'm sorry. Because you put yourself in every situation that you're in. You think about what you bring about. Your re truly. Truly. And your reactions to those actions is what really defines who you are as a human. 100%. So, if you put yourself in a shitty situation... You can be redefined by your reaction tenfold, which is kind of where I'm at a little bit in my life. Yeah. I fell down hard, but I have put, propelled myself to a higher level through veganism raw and through working out 10,000 steps per day for 115 days, running 5 to 15 miles by helping people and reaching out and being holistic and happy, I've never, ever put these things together. So, I can be judged by where I was, or by where I'm at, or where I'm going. So, it's all mental. It's all mental, and what really I feel about those feelings. Yeah. It's, I mean, I mean, you, you're agreeing with me. You might be the first person, and I think you might be the first.
first person I've ever told that something like that to. You get in a car crash and it's your fault? Regardless to if it is or not. Right. I mean, according to like. Right, right, right. Not in a car. Anything that happens to you. No, no, no. I'm with it. My attorney would agree. My mentor. Subconsciously, you you created every single thing that has ever happened in your life. When and put you even, even, even if it's death. That is a scary thought. But you're in full control. Once you know that you're in full control. But the thing is, I could talk about it, right? I could say all this stuff. I could be full on woke, if you will, we'll call it. But it is not fucking easy to do that. It's very, very, very hard to focus. And those big ballers up top, that's what they did. They focused and they, they went into the doors and didn't close them. And, it, and then some, one of those doors, or a couple of those doors that opened up, ended up being exactly what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And then they knew how to execute, and they knew how to put that work in. That's what they did. Any, even kids, the 18 year olds, 20 year olds, that are multi-millionaires, that are artists. Their music isn't that great, but look at them. I've got multiple that come to my car wash with their Lambo trucks and their Ferraris and their blacked out, matted black fucking Cadillacs. 20 years old. I run into them at the bank sometimes. I just pull up wads of cash from going to Vegas when I hang out with all these fucking artists. They're kids that are, that are, that are, that are living in, in, in a multi-million dollar like a part, like a um, multi-million dollar fucking neighborhood like Chateau Lawn. They're children, like they're kids, actually. But you know what they did? Executed. They executed on opportunities that what they wanted, they got. They went for it. They went, they went, they went full on, and they didn't stop. No one stopped them. You can do it. I can do it. You can do it. Anybody can do it. Anybody can fucking do it. Hell yeah. Does that make sense? I have something to give you, actually. It's truth. It's definitely no, true. It's not hard. It's, yeah. not, it's, not, it's not easy. I need mean, other your other hand. Okay. So this is the most precious gift in the world, <laughs> and it can do so much. So what are you gonna do with it? What is it? Actually, hold on. I need to borrow it real quick. Here's ten more. <laughs> but what is it? It's the most precious thing in the world. It's everything and nothing. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to take it. I'm going to put it in my pocket. I'm going to pull it out later. Hold on, though. I need it back. I need it, I need it back. It's in my pocket. You can't do it. It's mine. But what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to understand it. And I'm going to figure out how it can help. Everybody else around. Mm -hmm. So, let me see your hand. Let me see it. Unfortunately, you didn't know that that ten stack that I gave you, I needed to invest in a hundred stack to make a million, or that I had ten million just coming for you, but you went out of the posture of giving, which you did at the beginning. You stayed in it the whole way. And if I phrased it differently, you would have probably been in the posture of giving and receiving. Because when you stay there, you never know what you're going to get or take or give. But it's going to be something. And that's kind of where you were with coming here today, saying, yeah, of course, I'm going to stay in the posture of giving, saying yes. Sure. Say yes. Yes. Say yes. That's a, that's a good way of hashtagging something. Say yes. Absolutely. Say yes. I did kind of the same thing, though. I said, I'm going to take this. I'm going to manifest it. I'm going to make it better. I'm going to invest it. Unless you need it. Right. Then I'll give it to but you. But still staying time. here, even if I don't... Re I need it, but how much do I really need it? Exactly. That's, a, that's a, I mean, it's a true point. It's very broad and vague the way you put it, but... That's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> as I, you're right. Everything I've been saying is very broad and vague. People can read and see and watch and listen to whatever I say. Uh, but you know what the problem is, David Brown, is that I could sit here and tell you how to think. 
or how I think you should think, or how I think, or whatever. But if I have nothing to prove and show for it, no one will fucking believe me. So I keep my mouth shut until I execute. And then, once I get to a certain point that people like to call success, then I'll tell them all the things that you're supposed to do or I think you're supposed to do, or at least I think is what I did mm. to get to where I was, regardless to whatever it is. And granted, I've been blessed right, with, with the, the, the family that has raised me and the hard work they put in to give me the kind of future I have. But there's plenty of people like that out there. I started to realize that I can't, I can't think that I'm that people look at me and like, oh, well, this is all we given to you, or well, whatever, whatever. But it's it's more of like a, it's more of like a, what's it called? It's more of like understanding that there's a lot more people out there with people and, and, and families that have a lot more that ain't doing shit about it. Facts. Was some monster? Sure, absolutely. Expanding, not easy. That's taking risks with pe things that they've taken their entire life to build. That is not easy to do. It's definitely about how you're a subject of your environment and how you react to it. That's it. All right, a little food and football break, and we're back for the final segment. I'm sure you guys saw what just happened. That's dope. So what just happened? Well, the Packers just touched got a touchdown right before the second half. And you're invested how? Invested in sports betting. I lost on the under in the first half. Lost on the Packers winning the first half. But hedged the bet with plus nine and a half Packers and they got a touchdown right there at the very end. There we go. So it's looking in my favor. I've already put money on the Packers in the entire thing, so that's, uh, that'll help. Not doing bad, not doing good, but, you know, sports are just hit or miss, so you just gotta go off instinct. Right. Scared money don't make no money. Facts. Smart money makes more, more money, but whatever, <laughs> call it what you want. So, so it's just fun, a couple hundred dollars here and there is no big deal. I'm just having a good time with it. How are you using your money? In smart ways. How am I using my money in smart ways? Right now, um, there's an accru a accrued amount of debt that's been cr created through my brand, Legend Apparel, through everything that I've done in growing the brand itself, right? Legend Apparel costs a lot. Apparel company in general costs a lot. Brand costs a lot of money in 2018. So the debt that I collected in there, um, the income that I'm making now versus the sales that I'm doing right now, collectively is taking care of the debt that was incurred in 2018. So the money that's being spent is to become completely debt free in the green with inventory, full on. So come 2020, that will be the case. So I took a major, major pay cut um, in in regards to taking money from my salary and putting it straight to debt, then I'm almost done. So I'm almost done with paying off the debt fully with my income and with my um, uh, sales at Legend Apparel. And together, by 2020, by living frugally, I will be debt free and everything will be complete profit. Every income wise that I make from the car wash and sales wise that I have from Legend. That way, I can finally build a business completely sustainable by the income that it brings in full. Mm. That's huge. That's, yeah. not e that's not easy. Not in one year. Not in two years. Two years? A business that takes an investment and tries to make that investment back? Not easy. And you've got it on the backs and heads of some pretty influential people. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see. Well, what happened, uh, David, is that it's like, um, it's like indirect feedback, right? So you get this feedback, right? So you believe in your product. You believe that you have one of the most comfortable and nicest and most luxury and cool looking t-shirts, mm. whatever. 
But it's when you give someone a shirt, right? Like you give a friend. Like obviously friends and family are going to support you no matter what. They're like, okay, let me buy a shirt. It's when they come back. It's when you consistently see them wearing your shirt. It has nothing to do with you. The hats, the way they fit, the shirts, the way they look, the way they feel, the way they make you feel. Those kind of things is what I've wanted in the beginning. I wanted my shirt to be, everyone's got a closet full of clothes, right? All the time. They've got a closet full of clothes, but those clothes, they only have like five to ten pieces of clothing that are like, that's one of my favorite pieces of clothing. I wear them at least once a week. At least. That's where I wanted to fit these into. When I wanted to fit Legend Apparel into that mm -hmm. side of their clothes. Not when I buy a t-shirt from a friend, like, oh yeah, I supported him, I gave him, you know, 50 bucks, 40 bucks, whatever the cost of the t-shirt was. I'm excited but to wear this one. I want to wear it. And, I, and, and what the way I is, feel when I'm wearing even it. Even if I'm out there, I get Snapchats and well, Instagram. And everybody sends me like, yo, I just saw your shirt on this guy. I just saw your shirt here. Oh, yeah, I've seen that logo there because I've seen that guy wear it. I've got people FaceTiming me like, yo, there's your shirt. You know what the coolest thing was though? This is out of this world, right? It gives me goosebumps because <laughs> it's happened like multiple times, right? So we've got, we've got a buddy of mine, you know, uh, his name is uh, Kevin Iza, right? This is just one example. Kevin Iza, he's a photographer. I've never met him in person, but we met on Instagram. He's a huge photographer, like, travels the world, does all this stuff. I met him through my buddy Stefan. Awesome guy, right? And then I got my buddy Ruben. He's a, his name is Brooks. I call him Brooks. Ruben Brooks. Is, uh, he's a fitness model, right? Like just a straight up... Just Big, big fucking guy, and he's just a, he's just a baller, right? And um, I went to school with him, right? So, <laughs> Brooks was wearing my shirt in an airport in New York. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, so was Kevin, where he was wearing my hat. That's what it was. He was wearing this hat right here, LGND hat. So they walked by each other. Right in the in the airport, I'm like, yo, yo, I know that brand. That's my boy Nuge. They're like, oh shit, you know Nuge? He's like, yeah, man, that's my fucking, that's my homie. I went to college with him. And he's like, oh shit, well, I, you know, I got connected with him through mutual friends. So they start talking, right? Come to find out, Brooks is looking for a photographer and a videographer to shoot his fitness modeling show. They're going to the same place. He's just there to hang out. He's like, I'll, I'll fucking shoot for you. I am connecting people. The brand is connecting people indirectly without me even being there. What that does is, the nucleus do? It's unbelievable. So it happened, you know, it happens quite a few times. I've got that might be like, how I titled this podcast. What? The nucleus. The nucleus. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. So I remember someone took a picture, like, look who I ran into. Two people that don't know who each other they are. One person knows me, the other person knows me. One person's wearing my hat, the other person knows my brand. And through a brand, and a completely through different a thing. commitment, through a community, you were able to bring these people together in a different city. Can you believe state. it? State. When I hear these stories, thousands they give me of goosebumps. miles away, full on goosebumps. Bro, I, mean, I see them. It, it, dude, it's amazing. It is it's a so beautiful cool. thing. It is bro. a cool, it is a cool thing. It is a really, really, really cool thing. I was wearing my Goddess Dope fanny pack yesterday. Those guys. Leaving cool. Walmart at 11 p.m. over here on Howell Mill. Those guys. Are Saw cool. this woman with the hat. Her name's Monica. She owns a hair salon in Buckhead. Her and her husband have a podcast themselves. And that's my next guest uh, coming on this. That's awesome. And it's just like literally because of, and I wear all white now pretty much all the time. So the few things. If I want a legend, I'll take a black and a white hat. Oh, gotcha. Actually, That's because okay. then I'll contrast when I wear the all white. And or you can get the black and white hat. You know what I mean? So exactly. that's, that's, that's what you buy. Or gold, if you want the black and gold hat. Just to have one thing different is the logo. That's kind of cool. So, and I got white, that. you know, legend shirts, so you can probably get it. You know, I, I give everybody, you know, all my friends and family, like 50% off everything. So Beautiful. But, um,. But yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a really, really, really cool feeling. Um, 
to it's, unite people to like that. To pull people together, that you just you created something like this. It's yours. When you see people out there, the indirect feedback you get from people is that I actually have a pretty good product. I've got something so good that people are continuously wearing it. And not only that, friends and family are coming back and saying, hey, can I get some more? Like it's like a drug. Because it is. Because isn't pleasure a drug? Isn't confidence somewhat of a feeling of endorphins and releasing your body? When you put my fabric on your body, the way it fits on your arms, the way it feels on your body, the way, you, the way, the way you feel as a person when you wear this shirt, with the, with the scoop hem, right, with the drop tail on the back, that urban style, new you, modern style fashion. You have buttons on them now? Well, these are Henleys, yeah. So I got, I got two of these that I got, I, uh, it's a, um, It's a legend shirt? Yeah. So this is, uh, this is Oyster Blue. Henley? And I've got butter. What's Henley mean? Hen Henley is, a, it was a company that started, like, buttons. They call them Henleys. So it's, it became, like, a norm of what, what it means to have buttons on t-shirts. Gotcha. This is called a Henley. So, so the way it feels, the way, the way, the way, the way when you put the shirt on is that, the level of confidence that comes out of you. Not only do you have a good feel, not only does it fit your arms, whether you're skinny, big, small, whatever the case might be, the way it fits on your body, enough room for anybody that's like a little out of shape or anybody that's fully fit. And in the modern style fashion, you walk around and you feel good. You feel like what? You feel like a legend. Like a legend. Right, like you're, you're the, and then, and, then, and then the logo, right? You got the crown, you've got the, the reefs, and then you got the G. If you ever look at the G, the G is a, is a, is a, uh, lowercase g and it's an uppercase g it's both of them right and the crown it, it's supposed to and then the reefs is supposed to um represent uh, royalty so royalty in your life is basically become the king of your own life conquer your life and go out there my slogan is become one become a legend become what you're supposed to do in this life Mm -hmm. Build a legacy and become a legend. That's the ideology behind it. Mm -hmm. That's what it really is about. And to do that, you got to have one thing, main thing, is confidence. And confidence is what brings out who you are. And if you look good, you feel good, you're performing, and you'll go out there and do the things that you are meant to do in this life. That is what legend apparel is. That's beautiful. Isn't that cool? That's fucking amazing. It's inspiring. I definitely feel the same when I wear the clothing. How much pressure do you feel to keep that feeling up? God, see that that right there is the is the is the hard part. Is that yeah, I might represent and be the owner of the brand that is this ideology. But if I don't uphold that ideology, being the owner of the brand. And what is it really? Because the brand is only as going to be as good as the person behind it. That's it. No, everybody knows what the brand's about. You can't let the brand control you. In essence, what I mean by that is, I have, and this is more of like a, like a motivating to me, right? It's supposed to motivate other people and like it's supposed to help them do what they're supposed to do and everything, but it's also motivated me because I would like to become one as well. So I created a brand called Legend so I can go out there and become one. Mm. Indirectly helping others do the same. Truly. That's really, that's really, that's really what I was going for. That's what I am going for. Legend is a brand, okay? Right now it's a clothing brand, right? But what's the easiest way to grow a brand? By people paying you to grow the brand. By people paying you to market that logo on the back. They market that. They, they say, here's $50, I'm going to buy your shirt, and I'm going to go out there and market. By paying you to market it. Which is, which is not, it's not, they also get, you know, a fabric, a clothing, they get a good style, they get everything like that. That's no problem. They're getting value out of it. But I'm also gaining value by them purchasing it when I have a logo on the back that they typically forget about. Everybody else sees it. They don't see it. They see a plain shirt. They don't like logos on the front. They just see a really nice black 
maroon, green, whatever colors you, we have right now, that's what they see. But they forget that I've stamped them on the back. Or they've stamped themselves, whatever you want to say. They're stamped on the back. And now everybody around them, behind them, essentially, sees that. And then they see how that person's acting. And how that person looks. And how that person feels. And the confidence that they're going out. And they're like, I, they subconsciously see that. A blank canvas. Minimalism. Simple. S simplicity. And it's, it's elegant. Right? Elegant. The, the shirts. The simplicity. shirts. Ele yeah, exactly. Those, those are the key words. That's it. it. So It's something I can definitely get behind. Because in this life, everything you own owns you. And so the more ownership you can feel with the items, products, brands that you interact with in your life, yeah. the more you're going to want to rep them. And so exactly. I think one of the best ways people yeah. Yeah, want cool. to rep Legend is because it's a blank fucking canvas. Blank front, blank back with a little stamp it's in the back. It's fabric. What am, what am I selling? I'm selling fabric. A blend that I've created. An experience. Well, me and Eric, Eric Dahlberger is one of my partners. He's mm -hmm. helped me create. I've got the. I've got inspired by Lululemon. So Lululemon has men's t-shirts. They sell for seventy dollars plus each t-shirt. Unbelievable amount of prices. Mm -hmm. like it's it's crazy. But their overhead is big. You know, it makes sense. They got stores everywhere. So they're priced accordingly, and their price and their margins have to be met. But. But it's a box tee. And if, when you put the shirt on, you feel so good. You feel so good. And I said, I want, I want to, I don't want to buy any more of these shirts. I bought like three or four Lululemon t-shirts, and I, those are my favorite shirts. And I was like, I just want to make these. I want to make it this. So I didn't copy by any means their fabric. I mimicked it. I, I understood what they were doing with the elastane, with their, with their, um, you know, spandex, whatever elastane. Their odor resistance, their their what they like to call we like to call this is modal, right? So it's an odor resistant technology. They they've got rain, which is more expensive, right? And then Pima cotton, which is the highest form of cotton right now is Peruvian cotton, um, that is the highest grade of cotton. It's like the most uh, valuable type of cotton you can get it comes from Peru. Blended together completely to create this. Now it's all a percentage. There's no reason to tell anybody what the percentage is. It make a difference. If you want to make the shirt, make the shirt. It's no problem. But the fact of the matter is, I wanted to create a shirt very similar to theirs, but even denser. So I made a denser version of a Lululemon T-shirt with a modern style fashion of a scoop. Mm -hmm. Priced it lower. Obviously, I don't have any overhead comparably. I do, but comparably to. So, it, it, exactly what it is—a blank canvas, right? Black T-shirt, whatever it is, with a with a stamp on the back that grows the brand. So, coming back to my point in the beginning, Legend is a brand. It's a clothing brand right now, but Legend can become anything. It can truly become anything it wants to be. It can become a record label. Okay, it can become a capital investment firm. Do you know why? Because of the ideology behind it. Right? The ideology behind legend, right, is that right now I'm growing the brain itself. So that logo, everybody gets to notice, subconsciously, whatever. They see it, they remember it, they see it again, they feel like they remember it. I've seen it somewhere. That's that's the that's the whole point. So when when my level of income grows and my level of capital grows to a point where it's past what I need to live in my lifestyle that I want and it grows now I can tr I can actually go out there and help other people who are trying to do certain things in their life that they have the knowledge they've got the guts the confidence the only thing that they lack is the money which is the last thing and then they come to a brand like mine like legend apparel or legend period and I could help them, ready for it, become one. Mm. Does, that, <laughs> does that make sense? Full so that's the investment baby. firm. So it could be a record label. There we go. Right, it could be a management company. It could be anything because it's a brand. And all I'm doing is growing a brand here. 
I'm not trying to, clothing is great. Yes, apparel is awesome. I love it because I love fashion and people love clothes and you're always gonna need clothes. Everyone's gonna need to be clothed. So why not look good? And why not spend a little, you know, not top, top, top dollar like Gucci, but not like Old Navy. Let's find, a, let's find an easy medium that people can spend $50 on a t-shirt and they know why they're spending fifty dollars on a T-shirt, and they're like, "Okay, this is fucking, this is nice, right? I feel good. I can wear this to the club. I can wear this to the bar. I can wear this to brunch. I can wear it anywhere. I can wear it to the gym if I wanted to. I can wear it to sleep, kind of thing, if I wanted to. And I always feel good. I don't have to ever feel like I'm dressed down, mm. ever. No matter what, no matter what I do, I can always feel good. Right? You got a girl over. You've been dating her for like maybe like a week, right?" Right, and uh, you, she's staying the night with you, not really going out or anything like that. But you also want to still look good. But you don't want to feel like you're dressed up. You can put a legend t-shirt, you can put this shirt on. I can hang out this shirt with sweats. And hang out on the couch and hang out with her, but I'll look good and feel good. Same thing, you're going on a date. But you don't want to overly dress up, right? Because you're going to like Red Pepper, for example. And you're taking a girl to Red Pepper, right? And you want to wear just like jeans and a regular, you want to feel casual, but you don't want to feel like you're dressed down. Boom, put a legend shirt on. I guarantee you, you'll feel like you are presentable, confident, you look good, you feel good, your arms look good, everything looks good about you, right? But you feel comfortable. I'm sold, bro. I'm not trying to sell anybody, I'm just trying to tell you that that's what the whole point of it is. I'm with you. So, what are some of the brands and businesses? that you work with around Atlanta, the bigger picture of legend and it's oh, like all stores and stuff in the community. Yeah. So I'm in um, a couple stores in Atlanta. I'm an exclusive game T again with the indirect feedback. He loves my shirt. Where's that? It's uh, right next to red pepper. I talked, I talked about earlier exclusive game, right? I talked about, you know, the stores that I was in earlier too, but I can dive in a little bit deeper. Exclusive game is a, um, like a high-end boutique that sells like pretty high-end clothing uh, and custom clothing for the whole, you know, like hip-hop industry and like artists. And it's, it's right next to Icebox, right? And T loves my shirts. He wears the black ones. He says the girls love it because the arms makes his arms look big. And stuff. Mm. So he loves his shirts. <laughs> uh, House of Fresh with Drummer Boy. We talked about him earlier. So that's another part. Um, he helps. You know, he sells them in his store, he wears them all the time, wears my hat all the time, that's awesome. Then you've got uh, Adam, uh, shops at Buckhead, right next to Gucci. Like, Gucci's like right here, Jimmy Choo's here, and then Adam shops is here, right under Gypsy Kitchen. And my shirt's right there as well. And then you've got um, Threads ATL. Um, they, uh, they're they looking for some new stuff because but they, 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 they've held our stuff for a while. And people bought their stuff over there in just Virgin Islands. So, um, involvement of the community. I don't really, you know, I do a couple Before things. Before that, there. what stores do you want to be in, and how do you want to manifest? Okay, so your overall, involvement so you're asking into about the goal stores. of legend, basically. Like, what do you want to do with this? Like, you got a you got a clothing brand, and and people obviously like it. People will buy it, and just you just you know grow it. What do you want to do with it? That's the Let's question you're asking. Thing. So you're basically saying that. So 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 my goal with where I want to take this clothing brand. Is astronomical. So I mean, you've got a product that you know will just fly off the shelf. <laughs> if it's marketed properly, and 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 knowing that Ludacris decided to wear it on stage willingly on his own without me saying anything, giving him anything, he literally went to the exclusive game, bought the shirt, put it on, wore it on stage at Shaky Beats. After a month of me releasing the shirts, then you've got Future, you've got a little Pump, you've got you know Future what? Yeah, but I don't have any pictures. I just know that he put it on. Someone told me. T told me. T uh, T's a very respectable guy, and he makes clothing for future. Need a picture of that, bro. Oh, trust me, Future's I know. Future's the bro. king of Atlanta. I know, bro. But you've got to think that Ludacris used to be. He is Mr. Atlanta. Mr. ATL is what he calls himself. So does he? Yeah, exactly. So I've got a bunch of I've athletes never seen that were. You know, anything. we've got we've got um, you know. I mean, he's uh, definitely more than me. Chris Lane, country <laughs> singer. He loves my shit. Chris Lane loves it. Wears my hats all the time. His his drummer for his band wears my hats all the time. Thanks Wait, so Ludacris, his name is Mr. Atlanta? That's what he calls himself. Where? Mr. ATO. In, in person or what? I don't know. People call him that. Mr. ATO. 
but David Brown is also this. I know he's <laughs> definitely more than me. <laughs> Shit, he's done a lot more for the city. Of course. Yeah, you can too. Um, so basically, um, the influence that I've had, so bringing it to the next step is getting into bigger name boxes. For example, like Pacific Sunwear, Paxson, getting into Tilly's, Zoomies. These kind of stores are urban. Paxson would be a hit, Kohl's. Mm -hmm. So Kohl's has a company called um, Good Life. What was it called? Good Life Clothing? Something like that. Yeah, very close. It's very close to my clothing. I mean, it's like various like Pima Cotton blends, you know, so it's like, it's it's very close to what I've got, but it's not exactly what I've got, right? Um, but they're already working with a similar brands, so having another brand in there, like that would take like a lot. And then, and, and this, this company's established themselves. So it's like, it, it and, and you try to approach these big boxes, yeah, they could sell, but what's the hype around it? Like, what is your creation of hype? around this, that people would literally go out of their way to go to Pakistan to find your clothing know that you said Legend, Legend Apparel. You know what I mean? So I've got to build that on my own. That comes with influence. But you only can bring out in your brand what exactly you put in. So if my focus is with the car washes and the property development side of my life, not so with the Legend Apparel side of my life, then it's only going to come out what you put in. I went hard 2018. 2019 was recovery. Generate capital. Slow down. Be patient. And come back stronger in 2020. What am I going to do? It's okay. It takes time. No one... No, I know you... People want to have it now. They want to have everything right now. To tomorrow. Today. But unfortunately, I don't want like, For nobody. Nobody. Even the people that, they, they, that happens overnight. You know what I, I love to say? Let me just say one thing real quick. I know I know, I talk a lot, but... That's what we're here for. Listen to this. Someone <laughs> told me this story, all right? So, this guy was sitting at like a coffee shop, right? He was, uh, he was drawing on a napkin, right? He was drawing. And he crumbled up. I mean, it was a, a, it was a beautiful drawing, right? So... A lady was watching him draw this just masterpiece, right? He crumbled up the napkin and he was going to throw it away. The lady stopped him. He was like, no, no, no. Let me buy that from you. How much do you want for that? And he looked at the lady and he goes, $50,000. And the lady was like, what do you mean $50,000? You just did that. You just drew that on a napkin in 20 minutes. And he looked at the lady and he goes, no, no, no. It did not take me 20 minutes to draw this. It took me 60 years to draw this. So the point being behind that is that he had taught himself, had blood, shed, tears, learned everything about art to get to the point that he can do it in 20 minutes. So the value in something comes with time put in. Shorten that down. Tighten it up, make it beautiful, That's and put it out for the people. And it's it's literally the past for the future. That's super. Important. And I get to and you have the honor and, and pleasure. And yeah. Abso oh, absolutely. That's so cool. And I'm just going ahead and making that repository now because we need it, especially people that I like and fuck with and brands that I'm behind. Why not do it now? I love like that. That's good. I wish. I yeah. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Yeah. Any final words? I'll tell just, the people where to find you online. Yeah, course. you can find me on uh, at A-P-T-H-A-K-K-A-R. That's my personal. And then you can find Legend Apparel on at Legend, L-E-G-E-N-D, Apparel, A-P-P-A-R-E-L, Company. All one word. Um, that's my clothing brand, so you can follow that to kind of see the progression that I've got. Um, basically, man, just... Car wash. Yeah, I mean, well, the Super Shine car wash is there. I mean, social media presence in that regard is not too important because, you know, it's a one, three, five mile radius of people that live around there, car washes all around the world. But yeah, absolutely. It's important. It's, <laughs> He's underplaying heavily. Super Shine at this moment. Express car wash coming to a city near you. With an EX? No. XPR. Express. Express. All day. Um, 
I'll just say to the people, you know, Atlanta's a beautiful city. Atlanta's a great place to live, a great place to see. There's a million things around here you can do. Um, you hear it from a local, I promise you, I wouldn't live here if I didn't have to. Um, that's not what I meant. I would, I would live here even if I had to, regardless. I love this place. It's, um, it's got a lot to offer, and the people here are just great. Southern hospitality meets city. Um, support local brands and believe in yourself because that is the most important thing in life is that you are worth it and you are enough for yourself and anybody else in your life. It's a fact. Become one. Become one. My man. Love that. Thank you for coming on. You've been one of the most delightful and colorful guests I've had. And yeah, you enjoy it. I've had a pretty diverse array of people, yeah. Atlanta, Atlantans, ATLians, thus far, and <clears throat> as this is the 11th episode, I'm thinking of the Dirty Dozen, I'm going to create a little group Love it. of Mr. Atlanta podcast attendees, guests, and, have, you know, I mean, it was you're, really you're, fun. you're in the company of it now, and who knows what company will sit in the future. It was fun, it's for kind sure. Kind of one of my intentions and goals behind this. I, I completely, I, I enjoyed everything that that we talked about. It was, um, it was cool, because what it does, it helps you. It helps you bring out everything that's on your mind, no matter what. Things that you forget, but it's there. Questions, pull. Motivate, indirectly just by you saying it, me, in regards. You asking, me saying, helps me get motivated to continue to do what I keep doing. Because people forget. Accountability. They, they, they get caught up in the void of everything that's happening in your life. But they forget really why they're doing everything they're doing. It is fun. That's why I'm doing it, because it's fun. It's life. I mean, this is not a practice life. Ain't no practice life. This ain't no practice life. You get one try. Go for it. Go all in. Do the things you want to do. There's someone out there doing. This is one thing I run on crime by design. There's someone out there doing what you want to do. Just There's someone out there doing what you're more qualified of doing just because they believed in themselves. That makes sense? Facts. There's people out there that are more qualified than you, but you're doing what they wish they could do because you believed in yourself. Mm. Even though they're more capable. Woo, bro, that should hit home for you. Hey, practice line. I think that's it. Two chain. Thank you, David. Hey, so who are two people you'd recommend to have on the podcast next? <laughs> two people that I recommend to come on the podcast next is not easy, but uh, I think you should bring Brian Fletcher on here because he, he thinks like me. Brian Fletcher is a flat, he's a, he's, he's a sharp guy, right? Your rain. yeah, right? Because he, he knows what's going on. Um, Definitely. and you know who else? Um, there's two other people I think. Uh, it would be really cool if you brought William on here. Just I just want to see what he has to say, kind of thing. I already actually approached different. him about it. Yeah, you turned it down. No, he's uh, definitely wants to. Okay, cool, good. So William would be a good person because he's my best friend and I'm talking 12 years friendship. We learn a lot. He's basically another version of me. I'm another version of him in my own personality. Um, do you know Miguel, DJ Real? Of course. Yeah. Recently he is an, a very ambitious person and he is he is after it. Full on. He has done... And I'm, I'm curious to see what he has to say because I've got a snippet of his life. Just a small snippet of what we talked about every time we get to hang out. He's done a lot. Really? Oh, he's done a lot. He's, he's, he's started his own corporation, made it a big corporation, sold it, completely started out completely. He went from here to family, kids, and corporation that he's built himself all the way to none of that and became a DJ and producer. And complete, it's like a completely separate life. And he's 25. Oh, dude, he's got he's, kids? He's got one, I think two, one or two. I think he's one. But dude, he's killed it. He's killing it. And and right now he's managing like this big time Latin artist. Like, 
and he's doing big, big, big things. I, I oh, truly man. believe that Brian Fletcher and what he's doing with this new app that he's got right now, he's not gonna be back in town for a while, so you won't be able to catch him for a while, but it's called Second Round. It's like a place that you can buy like baseball gear from like pros, and like it's like a place that people can trade. And, like, it's, like, it's like it's like play it against sports, but like for baseball, but it's like really like nice stuff. Niche. And then you've got DJ Real that's Niche. like killing it in life, and then you've got William Minor who's also very ambitious and like a complete, his mindset. It's a fun, it's a fun conversation with him about his mindset, like his his ways of thinking. You know what He's I mean? got one of the best minds. I know you said two, but there was three guys right now. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll take five. Give me two more. No, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't on top of my head, I don't really have uh, two more. I mean, I can, you can probably bring So on. with DJ Real, uh, Miguel, I haven't had a Hispanic guest yet. Oh, but you know and him. Puerto Rico, I Hispanic. forgot we saw each other See, at yeah, that yeah. club, Republic. I was at, behind the DJ booth when you we were mean? behind. Yep, yep, yep. And I was I was taking my life coach Chelsea through Republic just to give her a quick little run through. You want to reach outside for another brand? You can go to Scott Fries. Scott Fries is a smart man. Yeah, he that's he good idea. he created with Imagine at last. Yeah, well, six feathers, right? Six feathers. And I'm and 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 I'm not the kind of guy to like ever hate on everybody anybody else it's like pure competition in the city do you bro there's plenty of market share for everybody facts oh my god it's clothing bro. Like, put it together nobody just wears one piece of clothing and that's it like there might be some weird people that might follow you and that's awesome and there's people that follow me they won't wear it and I you don't offer care. that many pieces of clothing there's market share for everybody like, shoes it's clothes socks, like pants, people wear nike and adidas shirts hats belts accessories all the things. You There's can't so it. many things. Absolutely, and that's the thing about it. You can uh, you can bring on him. I would I would reach out to him and be like, hey, you know, Scott Freeze. Scott Freeze. Sure. Scott Freeze would be a good one because, he, again, I got I would very curious to hear about his life and how he started everything that he's done. He made At Last and that took off like crazy. And then you know something happened in lawsuits and stuff, and they started Six Feathers. And they told me that you know he did everything he could to a certain point. Nothing was working. He moved to Hawaii was out there for a while and he, he told me a story and I was like, wow, that's amazing, right? So I only got a small snippet of it. I'd be truly interested in no more. So <laughs> pure competition. Go. Legend Apparel's main comp competitor in Atlanta, basically the only competition, is Six Feathers. And they're crushing it right now. I'm so fucking happy for them. That's awesome. Well, God is dope, too. God is dope, too. Uh, Jay. Jay Brazel. Jay Brazel is the president. Very cool guy. I've met I've I've had a meeting. Um, the owner is his buddy, right? But the owner doesn't really do much. Jay is the president. I'm very close with him. So Jay is, he does more of the stuff with Goddess Dope? He basically runs the show. And then you've got... Um, I don't know Jay that well. I know Sherrod Simpson very Jay's well. Jay is the president mm -hmm. of Goddess He's Dope. He's the creator and owner and okay, the guy so, who gave me my two fanny packs. Oh, wow. Okay, so yeah, Goddess Dope owner. I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him that well. I don't, I don't know him actually at all. But I know Jay. And I know Jay's the president. He's helped the company big time and Charlie is the digital marketing head of God's Dope he's basically taking that company to further heights yeah but bro Charlie's, because they sell online like I, there's, buddy, they are I, I see people outside Everything. who are wearing God is Dope that have never even been to the store yep and they just bought it online and they do Missy very, Elliott has worn it Janet oh, Jackson oh, big, big. some of the biggest names and games in the world yeah and I mean, you think about what they're doing, though. Think about what they've yeah. written. I mean, they caught just, something. Just God is what my fanny pack says. Yeah, I know. I've seen it. I've seen it. I saw the new. I, I follow God is dope like crazy. I know them very well. Not the owner, but I know the people that are like very like high level involved in it. Charlie, um, he's the digital marketing. He's a fucking genius. Uh, Absolute genius. Digital marketing head. His girlfriend's father is working for Pennzoil, right? And they work. Uh, he works for a distribu distribution company. I, I own an oil and lube shop, so. The, so he comes and tries to get business from me because I, I work with cash flow and I work with a different distributor so he's trying to get my business because I'm a new owner so I met him he's an awesome guy John and John uh, told me like yo you should hit up Charlie so I talked to Charlie and Charlie has done some work for me you should make a legend got his note collab so, bro yeah coming soon I'm serious think about a black shirt legend apparel scoop MT with my fabric with my logo with a got his dope written on it in gold and I'm, I'm going to make it, and I'm just going to send it to him. I'm not oh, gonna... man, I would, I would rock his... Think about that. I know, I know, I know. 
And the thing is, that bring a lot of industries. Oh my God! And people together. Well, you know what? One thing I like to love to say: collaboration over competition. Any day. Any day. That's how you win. That's how you win. I'll help do some. These hats. Graphic these designs. hats. This is a collaboration. Here we go. You know, this is a collaboration, right? Tell me. Tyler Jari, Chad Jari. Those are two guys. They run Wool Brothers. Yeah, I bet. Wool Brothers have these hats. Says ATL with a box on it. I yeah, love those hats. Before I even started the company, I was like, you know what would be awesome? Before I launched this company, I was like, yo, I should make these, some, these hats. And I was like brainstorming. I was in New Orleans when I was working for this marketing agency. And I was there and I was, it was iced over. I couldn't get into any meetings or anything. And I was stuck in this hotel room. And I thought of an idea. And I called Tyler. And I was like, yo, what do you think of this? LGND in a box. Like your ATL hats. Like, Let's do a collaboration. I'll pay you a royalty for every hat I sell. You know, it's been a year since, you know, since I did that and, you know, I did it for a while, you know, and after that it just became like, you know, North, but he helped me create, I mean, he's still getting a royalty? It's, it's a box logo. I mean, I haven't, I mean, I think at this point we've gotten a mutual understanding that, you know, it, it is what it is. It's yeah. like a dollar per hat, you know, I could, I used to send them like $50, $20 randomly just based on sales. I don't do that many sales to like justify the, but at some point in time, I'm probably going to send him more royalty. It's not a big deal. We're friends, right? You know, right. It's not a big deal. So, um, is there anything in writing? No, yeah, it's just more verbal. But it's it's yeah. it's, it's it's he's he's awesome. Cool. Yeah, 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 of course. We're friends, Respect so it's not even like that. Thing. It's not even like that. It's more of like a. It's more of like an idea that I've thought about when I saw his ATL hats, and I was like, LG and D was like great in a box like that, and now everybody you know loves both hats. It's not a big deal. Um, but it's collaboration, collaboration over competition. competition, and that's how it works. True. Facts. So, um, how about you get going? Yes, sir. It's been great. Brown, always good seeing you, buddy. Always a pleasure. I'm gonna bring you some gear, and I uh, appreciate you having me on this podcast to share what's up here with you. My honor and pleasure. Come on, baby. Come on.